Hey, good evening. All right, here we go again, right? Um, while performing some tasks here in my garage, um, I thought about uh, answering a friend's question. And this friend of mine is a high school classmate from back home in the Philippines. Um, what is going on now in the Philippines, particularly the South China Sea? We have seen an escalation of, uh, without using deadly force, an escalation of encounters between the uh, supposedly Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy and our very own uh, Philippine Coast Guard. Um, it's a David and Goliath thing, you know, uh, a 400 ship Navy versus basically a Navy which has about less than 10 combatant crafts. Oh, it's, it's heartbreaking what's happening in my country back home. So the question my friend asked me was, uh, hey Marcus, what do you think of uh, the capabilities of the United States Navy? Because we already, it's a foregone conclusion. If the PLAN ever decides to attack the Philippines, hardware per hardware, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to lose our whole Navy. All right. Just their fishing trawlers alone just ends up ramming our Coast Guard vessels. So there it goes, man. So uh, I was actually surprised after a year or two years now that uh, the United States had come to the assistance of the Philippines as an ally. As a former Commonwealth, uh, as a former colony of the United States, they were, I think their, our hands were tied. So it's going to be a political drama here in the next 10 years or so. If nothing happens, hopefully nothing happens. But what is the capability of our current United States Navy? Um, hardware per hardware. I'm not even going to talk about the geopolitics of it all, right? Uh, it's a different, uh, that would be a different topic of conversation. Or, uh, or how the allies are going to contribute to this thing. Uh, you have to understand, my friends, that uh, my friends back home are worried. Uh, and so am I. Uh, now, they don't have the data, they don't have the information, uh, and fortunately, with me being retired Navy, I kind of know a little bit about hardware, uh, having served on a few combatants, um, and I, I am, I am uh, very appreciative of that. So I'm here to share that information to my friends back home, all right? Okay, by the numbers, uh, what makes the United States Navy powerful are our aircraft carriers. Next in line are our uh, cruisers and then our uh, guided missile destroyers designated as DDGs. We don't have any smaller craft. Our FFGs has long been decommissioned and we're not going to have uh, a sizable amount, which would be 12 of them probably not till the next five, six, seven years. So what we have now is a flotilla, it's a fleet, the seventh fleet. Uh, which can only muster a certain amount. Here is what kind of frustrates me. If we have to go to battle with what we have, Navy versus Navy, our options are very limited. I'll explain to you why. Let's talk about numbers, right? The Chinese People's Liberation Army slash Navy has a total of, now correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I don't exactly know the numbers, but they have a total of 60 plus destroyers, guided missile destroyers, 60 plus, right? Compared to the Navy's, 73, okay? Now, you're from 60 to 73, the workhorse of uh, the United States Navy, the Arleigh Burke class destroyers, of 73, but they're divided between the west coast and the east coast so let's do the math 73 divided by two you're down to 36 let's just say 36 out of those 36 which ones are deployed in the united states navy one third of our assets of a particular class of ships are always deployed so 36 divided by 3 12 we have currently at least 12 guided missile destroyers in the Western Pacific currently deployed or close by. 
as compared to the capability of the Chinese, which are 62. Now, if we follow the symmetrics of this, right, and analyze this 62, not all of them are going to be deployable. Knowing our quality control standards, uh, is, uh, th theirs is not as thorough as ours. So let's just assume that half of those 62 were deployed, 31. 31 versus 12. Well, also, we don't have any frigates. They have about 50-plus frigates and do the bath again, right? And they also have corvettes, which are shallow water uh, missile boats, basically about, I think, 60, 70. And then they also have uh, this little which we supposed to have our LCS as brown water Navy missile boats. They have more than a hundred. So granted, if we go man to man, ship to ship, we're going to lose by the numbers. All they're going to do is launch our little missiles, right? Carriers. Supposedly they have three. Now, not all three of them are going to deploy, right? To say one or two the most. What do we have? We have a forward deployed aircraft carrier based in Japan, which is normally allowed to surge. Uh, I've never been on a carrier, so I don't really know how long it would or how short of a time frame they need to go on their way in a DVG, which is gas turbine. All we needed was line up the air, fuel, and water systems, push a button, and we're underway in 30 seconds. Well, not really, but it takes you less than a day to do that. But on a carrier, I don't know, right? So let's assume that the U.S. round rate is able to deploy. Aside from that, now we have 11 carriers, 10 Nimitz and the Gerald Ford. Out of those, five are, six are in the West Coast, five are on the other side. I would assume out of those six, two are deployable because one-third, right? But that doesn't normally happen because one is always going to be in the Western Pacific and the other one is going to be in the Arabian Gulf. So let's assume the worst case scenario. We're going to have two. Two aircraft carriers, right? Problem is, the Chinese, even though they're pretty ignorant on how to use their carriers because we have 100 plus years of experience dealing with it, right? And besides a flotilla of two CG, a, a CG, which is about 116 missiles, and a pair of DDGs, which is about 90 missiles each. Now, assume, right, that those are all surface-to-air missiles, which is not going to happen, right? Okay, 116 plus 180, that's 396. And say 400 SAMs. Do you think the Chinese are stupid and dumb enough to only launch 400 Surface-to-surface -surface missiles, intermediate-range ballistic missiles, which they have, on one aircraft carrier, they're going to go 400 plus one, assuming one's going to get through. Okay? I get it. Seamless, close-in weapon systems, all that stuff. The other problem is that our Super Hornets and F-35s, the carrier can only go to battle as far as its air wing is going to take them. I think... I'm not an aviation guy, but their radius is 800 miles. 800 miles. I drive to San Francisco from Washington. 878 miles. That ain't much. That's the radius. They got to come back, right? So they can't go 1,600 miles one direction. They can only go 800 miles. While the Chinese intermediate range ballistic missiles, I can assure you have a range of more than 800 miles. Okay, that's the math. So I, I have, we talk about range, capability, etc. Oh, oh, let's not forget. We do have one advantage. Our attack submarines, SSNs and SSGMs, right? Which the Chinese does not have any counter with. They don't know how to do anti-submarine warfare. Their subs are incapable of hunting ours. So we have a freelance capability of launching Tomahawk cruise missiles or doing anti-shipping uh, um, uh, anti-shipping or anti-submarine warfare with our own subs. That's good, but it's a 400 ship Navy, man. 
Now, why do I not want to add? Of course, the Atlantic side is on that side. We have the capability. We, we're, we're actually in a disadvantage because we have to police the whole world. Now, granted, when we ever, if we ever, God forbid, go to war with China, those assets we have are going to be surged to the Western Pacific, right? But still not enough. What we need now is a procurement method to allow our shipbuilding sites, right? Our shipbuilding capability to flourish. <laughs> I think I just mentioned another problem. China has, I think, six currently shipyards capable of building ships faster than we can build at any given time. They have one shipyard that is bigger than all of our shipyards combined in capability and in production. So it's not looking good, right? So our advantage is on carriers, but if we have to get any closer, we're gonna lose those carriers. An air wing of 90 aircraft each. So if we search two or three, that's about 180 to 200 aircraft. Uh, a missile system, surface to surface uh, uh, missiles on our ships, we do have enough, right? Because we do have more vertical launch systems, systems, VLS systems than the Chinese have. We also have heavier ships, which means they are more capable than what the Chinese have. We also have a more experienced um, enlisted um, and officer corps, enlisted primarily, right? Because we know how to fight. I should know. That ship ain't going down. It'll fight. Problem is, when you expend all those missiles, you got to come back and reload. It's not like you got to, you, you lose a, 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 an ample amount of ammunition and you got to put in a new magazine. It doesn't work like that out at sea. And the closest peers that we have that could probably do this for us is Japan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all you fire control system technicians, I, when I was in Japan, we never unloaded our, our, our missiles. We never did. We, we have the capability to shoot at North Korea and China from the pier. Okay. So I, I don't know how we load our missiles. I Really, I don't. I work in engineering. I don't work for fire control systems. But correct. Uh, put a comment in there somehow, right? If you do know. Um, now, when it comes to the delivery of, of, of uh, uh, bombs, missiles via our air wing, Yes, we have an advantage. We could launch up to 50 aircraft at any given time, send them up on their way with a bomb load of 10,000 pounds of either general purpose bombs, uh, joint direct attack munitions uh, that are guided, right? And that's our advantage. But our carriers can only go so far as the range of our aircraft, you know? So we got to refuel them. We got to figure out a way to do that. Couple of things here. Uh, now, granted, the United States Navy does not fight by itself. On another different scenario, because right now I'm running on 30 minutes, right? I will have to discuss how we use combined arms with the United States, uh, United States Air Force, the United States Marine Corps, and support elements of the United States Army, which is based in South Korea. Right? So with that, we don't worry, that's my fan blowing right now. Okay, it's gonna go here in a second. But I gotta keep my house heated up. It's still in the 40 degrees here. So ship per ship, where are the disadvantage? Missile per missile, uh, on a tactical level, yes, we do have the advantage. Air wings, we do have the advantage. Carriers, yes, we do have the advantage. Submarines, we are we are out there. The Chinese don't even count. You can stomp on them right now, okay? So the bottom line is this. If we have to go to war, counting on just the United States Navy, counting on just our capability with what's deployed out there, we're going to come up on top because the Chinese still have to send out their flotilla, which we would see our ISRs, our, our capability is up there that we're able to detect uh, and engage them, right? With what we know, right? So right now, my friend, my buddy's back home. Don't feel heartbroken. 
because numbers does not tell everything, right? My next video, I will explain the geopolitics of this, why the Philippines is vital, why an alliance from Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, the Philippines, and that belt of islands we call Indonesia all the way down to Singapore is vital in the defense. Oh, that, I almost forgot, Okinawa, okay? And combined arms with the Air Force and the Marine Corps on how we are going to bottle up China on the first line of defense, okay? So, mga kababayan, huwag po kayo mabahala dahil uh, kung meron po isang pagkakataon na kailangan patunayan ng Amerika na nasa likod po natin, namin kayo, uh, it's funny that I say that because I am Filipino by birth and my heart still goes with you guys. Uh, ito na po ang patunay na unang una eh, galit, galit ang Amerika sa inchik eh. Yan ang magagawa natin. Eh, yung Ukraine, gusto nilang pabayaan pero yung inchik, I, I, I don't know. That's another topic of conversation. Right? So, the numbers does not say much but I can assure you that the quality of the forces we have is ready to go to war. So, mga kababayan ko, kayo po ay huwag uh, magulat dahil may kaduktok pa ito. Alright? So, in my, for my thoughts to yours, I love you guys. Uh, I'm still thinking about you guys back home. And hopefully this kind of appeased everybody's uh, um, awkwardness of, of really what's going on back home. I'm, I haven't been home in the last 25 years. I need to go home. And I miss home. And maybe if uh, somebody could uh, tour me around, it would be great. All right? So you guys take care. Enjoy the evening. I'll talk to you guys soon. Post.